to me show me a bear bro for kakra into more fun chemi uh and that yeah uh yeah 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 celebrate women from all walks of life into and now share me guess i'm aware nina we were women from Ghana, outside Ghana and Europe. In T and Edia San show no ever caught in the intent. Ma, my main car is this weekend, the first round of the women's premier league came to an end. And I, as they say, I make a city Hazaka's ladies there on top of the league table with 18 points. And Berry ladies lost their first game of the season. Apart from that, and the other sports news, no. But because of time factor, and it's in one of my guests, our first speaker for this important uh, show, special show, your friend Laura Georges. Laura Georges, uh, Secretary General of the French Football Federation, uh, also a former player of PFG, uh, PSA, PSG. Ah, uh, Osa, I uh, a former player of Bayern. Osa, uh, a former player of Lyon. In this case, the Wabo Bonne, we are. Ah, she's part of uh, share decision makers when it comes to football in the world and then French. Uh, on on the first guest for today. Laura, good morning. Welcome to Ghana. Good morning. <laughs> so I am guessing this is your 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 first time speaking on a radio in Ghana, right? Yeah, it's the first time I'm talking to uh, to a Ghanaian radio. Yes. <laughs> I am honored. I am honored. It's good to see you again. I quite remember last year we had the opportunity to meet, and then today we, we, we are doing this to celebrate women. Is 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 we are so thankful for for giving us the privilege and then the honoring our invitation. It's my pleasure to participate. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Now, it's here for Laura. No, no, no. You are another guest, a friend, Rafa to Inusa, or Ghana Rugby Bordeaux, or Saka Africa Rugby, a women adventure Bordeaux, or Saka account. But we see Rafa to very soon. But first, my uncle Laura, so because of time, facts, and it's no, no, because I free, uh, Obi Mayan, so France, and as I say, I'm in Laura, let's start the conversation from, um, women in leadership, because today we are celebrating women across the globe. So women in leadership, first of all, what's your general overview of women in leadership position? Uh, especially, let's narrow it down to sports, women in sports leadership. What's your general overview? Are there many? Are they doing well? Uh, I won't say that we are, we are many women on top of the sports governance. Uh, but as you know, we, we have uh, Fatma Samura who is leading uh, as the general secretary of FIFA. So she's, she's setting a great example for us women in sports in general. Uh, in France, you have to know that in every uh, sports federation, at least you have three women in executive board, which is really important to have like representation of women in execu executive position. So we know that we, we, we try to inspire the, the youngest generation. But for the moment, uh, looking at the, the different federation and uh, sports governance in general, we don't see so many, so many women uh, in executive board. But and more and more women are, are, are inspired and willing to, to, to get higher position in sports. Well, you 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 are um, a, a special a special case. I say a special case based on the fact that you played the game. You were you played she believe cup. I mean, you have played every tournament that a female footballer is supposed to play from the World Cup to play for the biggest clubs in the world. Now you are part of the decision makers. I mean, they, 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 there's this always notion that women in leadership or women in general, they don't like supporting each other. The women in leadership, those in the higher position, do you see them setting good examples for those of us who are up and coming? Well, you know, I, um, I'm looking forward to have more uh, female athletes getting uh, in, in the executive board. This is what I, I'm looking for, to, to see more players getting involved. For the moment, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I've been pretty lucky to have uh, uh, good people around me supporting me, and especially my vice president, Brigitte Enriquez. She's the vice president of the French Federation, and she has been a really good support to me. But for the moment, um, I know I know there's like a competition between women, um, but we are still. Uh, I can still see that women want to support women. I've been talking to Fatma whenever I need help, whenever I need, I have question. She's there to answer my question, to support me. And in general, in a woman football in executive position, we try to support each other because we know it's really hard to be a woman in a, in a male, uh, male executive board. So for the moment, I think we are still 
Uh, mm -hmm. We can do better to support each other, but for the moment, personally, I'm I'm not gonna be complaining. I I got the support from uh, from women who are like at top position. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I mean that that the. the one of the main reasons why my, my production team and myself decided to have you on was based on the fact that you, 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 you have done it all. As a player, you know the problems with uh, 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 the game. In Ghana here, some of the, the female footballers, they don't see the need to add education to the talent. They don't see the need to, to, to go to school, even after football, even once they play, they can have other uh, uh, things that they can rely on. But then you, 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 I believe you took your education seriously. That is where, that is why you are where you are now. Take me through the transition from playing football. I mean, being the talk of town, playing the She Believe Cup, playing the Champions League, playing the World Cup and winning all these uh, awards. But then you decided to, to go into school then do something else apart from the talent that you had. Take me through the transition from a player to Laura George as the Gen Secretary General of the French Football Federation. You know, as a player, when I started, it was just for fun. I never think about being a professional player because when I started, it was in 1996. Uh, I didn't know about the national team. I didn't know that I could have a career. There was no women professional teams. So when I play it was just for fun, but then I got the chance to be an intern in the in, in the National Institute, and then to have like a scholarship to study in the US. Uh, and I and I did management and I did uh, communication classes because I knew I was not gonna be rich thanks to football. And my aim was just to have fun playing, but I knew it was really important to study because besides football, I need to constrict myself as a woman, as a person preparing for my future professional life. So even when I was studying, I was a professional player. I got the chance to become a professional player. I was still studying because for me, it was really important to be dedicated, not only to football, but to be like, uh, to be like a normal person, to have like a, a life beside football, to get to spend time with students, with regular people. Because I knew my career was just going to stay for one of maybe 10 years, I don't know, I didn't know. So I got the chance to play and then I got an opportunity to be a member of the executive committee because uh, my president one day contacted me and, and he, he, he knew I was involved in sports uh, because during my study, I, I did study women's sports and I did study how to promote the game. So he knew I was someone really involved, someone who had like a voice and, uh, and I thought, okay, you know, it's easy to criticize as a player and to say, oh, the federation is not doing the work, or oh, my club is not supporting enough the woman. And I said, when you get an opportunity, it's important to evolve. So for women who are listening to me or players who are listening to me, girls don't wait for people to change the situation. When you get an opportunity or when you don't even need to wait for an opportunity, whenever you can, you can bring a difference like be involved in your club, be involved for the kids. Um, and if people don't ask for your help, you can go to see clubs, you can go see federation and say, okay, I have this experience or I don't have experience, but I want to learn. I want to bring something to, different to the game and things can work. You know, we don't have to wait for people to change their mind. It's like, and today it's like a special day to remind us that women fought for the right. So it's our, responsibility also to take charge and not wait for men or other women to do the job. And there is no age. I always say to the girls, there is no age to be a leader. Don't wait for to have 40 years old to be 50 or to have a position to try to same thing, to change things. The, we can see that young girls are changing things because they raise their voice. So let's not be afraid, but we will also need the support of men because it's not like a woman's fight. It's a, uh, it's a fight for, ev for for equality, and it's about everyone. So we need the support of everyone. But don't wait for people to go after your dreams or to, to support the women's game. Do it. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Now, um, you mentioned earlier on that you had a support from your federation when you started. Um, 
was it many? Because in Ghana here, I can, I can assure you that when it comes to women participating in sports, the support is quite uh, low compared to the men when they start. When you started, I mean, I understand the, the, the different uh, geographical locations. So maybe your situation might be different. When you started, the support, did you get a lot of people supporting you or they were just telling you, you're a woman, you don't need to be there to, to, to make these decisions? You know, when I took this position as general secretary, there's not, um, we don't study to be a general secretary. There's no uh, books telling you, you have to do this and this. So I was learning on the field and I got the chance to have a mentor. She's a woman, she's my vice president, and she used to be the general secretary. So we, I spent time talking to her to say, okay, I, how can I do this and this? So she was supporting me a lot, but it was not easy because around me, I had people who are not like giving me any advices. Uh, but I got the support from my president and my vice president, and it was enough. And this is what I said to people. We don't always have people to support us. And it's a reality. When we get some position, people don't support us. They're watching, but not supporting. But you just need one person, one person to support you, to make who, and at the same time, it's important for us to go after mentors. Mentors are really important. So it's not, we should not look at the people who are not supporting us, but more focus on the people who want to help us. And if we don't, we need to go after people who can support us, bring us to another, another level. But it's not easy. It's not easy because some people want the position too. But, you know, we have to look at, okay, let's do it and let's find the people who want to support us. That's what we have to focus on and not the negativity. Yeah, right. I, 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 totally, I totally agree with you on that. But my, you, you mentioned that the, the vice president, she's a woman and she's the former secretary general. She supported you. You mentioned the president of the French Football Federation. He supported you. It's, you know, it's important as women, once, once we decide to do this job, I said this job as in sports, because it's, it's something that people have the belief that it's something for men. So once women inspire or aspire to be in it, it's important to have the support of men who people think they are supposed to be doing it. How crucial, how important is it to have men supporting you? When you started, did you, apart from the, uh, the, the president, did you get any other male uh, support system? I had, the, I had the support of the people working with me. Some people working with me were like uh, easy to talk to. You know, sometimes you have position, but when you want to work on projects, people don't answer to the fact that you bring this energy. Sometimes they cut the energy and don't want really to work with you. But I got the chance to have people respecting my career because I was lucky to be an, an ex-football professional player. But for those women who are not professional players, who are not really into football, but who got position, um, I know it's not easy because some people don't trust women. They don't trust women. That's why I say we need the support of male. We need the support of men to support women. Because when we see men supporting women, other men are watching and say, yes, we need to trust this woman because these other men trust this woman. That's why this fight of like having more women in position is not about women for women. We need to have male also to support us. Because when men are supporting us, it's, it's like sending the message that men accept women and we can work together. And it's true that when I work with men, men are telling me, yeah, you bring something different than other men. It's, it's a good combination. It's not like we want to, uh, to dominate the world with women, only women. No, 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 no. We need the energy of everyone. And having women in position is bringing a different... Uh, a different perspective, different. So it's it's good to have different perspectives, to have diversity in a, in different positions. Thank you. I totally I agree with you. Luckily for us today, uh, on the show, our guests, we have former players. So for Rafa too, for instance, she is a former rugby player. She's now part of the Ghana Rugby Board and then Africa Women's Advisory Board. And then we also have Cleopatra. She is a former player, now owns a club, and she's part of the Ghana Women's Premier League Board. So it's, it's, 
I'm happy when I see former players joining to change the course because you guys play the game, you understand the problems, you understand the situation, and you know what needs to be done. So once you decide to involve yourself, then we can have uh, uh, solutions instead of more problems. My last question, I know you you, you have a busy schedule. Uh, share with us the challenges that you face and advise the up and coming uh, female footballers or even everybody in general who wants to actually leave playing or venture into uh, administration, coaching, than any other uh, field in the sports. What advice do you have for us based on the challenges that you face? I think the challenges that I'm facing is sometimes confidence. It's, it's in a problem. <laughs> sometimes, you know, you start working on, on a project and you're like, mm, is it really for me? Do I, do I really have the capacity? Because sometimes we don't always have the support. And sometimes we get like uh, bad comments. And then we're like, we doubt ourselves. So my advice would be to say, you know, when you really want something, when you know you are doing it for the right thing, it's not about power. It's about, I, I talked the, about the example of, I am in the Federation, I was uh, appointed to support and develop women referees. And I was coming to a different um, field. Like I'm a player, but referees are different. And then sometimes I was like discouraged because people were not supporting too much the fact that I wanted to bring another energy. But then I was like, it's okay. I will do it because I know the women's referee needs support. And they can train with men and they have their and they have the ability to, to compete in men's games. So I keep my goal and focus. This is what I say: to not be destabilized by people, to not be uh, uh, lacking of confidence. We have to know exactly what we want, to have like objectives, clear objectives. Because when you have clear objectives, it doesn't matter you have like bad people on you on your way or people who are criticizing criticizing you. When you have clear goals, no one can like push you on the side. You know why you are doing it. So. Be clear in what you want to do and have mentors, people positive around you. This is what I would advise to any girls. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you. I think I, the advice goes for all of us, even though not just young girls, even those who are yeah. older and they are still aspiring. Because you said there is no age limit to whatever you want to achieve. Um, before I let you go, anything you want to share with the, regarding the French uh, Football Federation, COVID-19, I know uh, there were a lot of activities that you guys planned to do, but because of COVID, um, things have been uh, as, uh, put to a stop. Well, any challenges? How is the Federation managing that so that others who are watching us, especially Ghana uh, Football Association, they can learn one or two things from there? You know, we are living like a really tough situation because sometimes we have like most of the time we have to stop the, the championship. I'm talking about football. So we have, we have to stop the championship and only the championship where professional can keep training can keep compete. So we, we see that the, some of women competition uh, division two uh, get upset and think that the federation is not doing the work, but we are adapting every time to what the government is telling us. And it's tough to defend the game because we have to prove that the girls too, division two can still play. And it's really hard. And people don't really understand that it's like a, a lot of discussion with the politics side and the government and the sport, because at the end, what is most important is like to have people safe, but players still want to play, but only the pros can play. And people need to understand that it's like a lot of discussion, but at the same time, what we see is that we have to upgrade the game for the women. So our division one is playing, but we also need to have the division two upgrade uh, for another level. But we have to be patient. And I say that to the players or those who want to play. First of all, let's take care of our health. Let's be patient. But it's true, we still need to fight to improve the condition for our women's game uh, so they can play even when it's complicated. And so. But yeah, yeah, let's keep, let's be patient and let's take care of ourselves and the people around us. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you. Thank you for honoring our invitation. I know you have to run. Uh, I have overdone the time you have given us. By the way, it's a privilege talking to you once again. Uh, we'll talk later. I, 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 I'll send you the link after your, your, your program. You, and Perfect. Then <laughs>
Thank you, you for the other, invitation. Other ladies as well. Wishing all my best to the girls and the men supporting women, and let's do it together.